Hey what's going on guys, Turty Worty here and welcome back to another Minecraft modding tutorial for I guess version 1.18 this time. So in this tutorial I want to be covering updating our, our uh, mod to 1.18 from 1.17. Since 1.18 has now released there's no point to be using 1.17 anymore. So, the update process can be a little bit of a pain, so I'm going to be showing you a very easy way that you can update. There are basically two ways. You can go ahead and change a bunch of different numbers all throughout everywhere. So that would be build.gradle. Uh, you also need to go ahead into your you know, mods.toml. Uh, you need to go into the pack MC meta, and you need to change this number here. Uh, you also need to go somewhere else I don't remember where the other places were but there's a few places that you would need to change some numbers if you were to do it that way the other way is to simply just install forge again and create a blank folder and just copy paste the source folder across which is what I'm going to be doing it's much simpler um, and it also allows me to show you actually fixing the errors that will pop up once we update so obviously the first thing we need to do is come to the forge 1.18.1 we're going to get the latest so that we need to make sure basically we have the version that's not broken so uh, i'm sure everyone has heard about the uh, log 4j thing uh, so we always want to make sure we get the latest at the moment until that has sort of died away so we want to get the latest mdk and obviously it's going to show up with an ad. We just wait three seconds. And there we go. We can just skip and that will give us our download. I'm going to open that. And I'm going to put it on my desktop for now. But I'm probably not going to want it there. So I'm going to create a new folder inside my inside where I want it to be, um, and I'll just call it 1.18 tutorial mod. There you go. Let's open that folder. Okay, this is just on my F drive. You can put it wherever you want. You could put it on your desktop in your documents. It's just the same as the setup tutorial, basically. Um, but I'm going to put it in here because I don't really have space on my uh, C drive anymore. Let's just extract all and we can choose the place that we want to extract it to, which is there. There we go. Just delete the stuff we don't want. So that's change log, credit, license, read me, those things. We don't need those. Okay, simple stuffs. Oh, that didn't work. Let's just open command prompt. And let's just do... I guess we can copy the source folder first. So I'm going to create a new tab. And just go to... Uh, where's my 1.17 tutorial mod? thought that was on my F drive, but maybe it is not. I found it, it was on my A drive. So we can literally just copy and we can paste into here. And then you can just go ahead and run the commands that we did in the first tutorial. First of all, I'm gonna make sure this is actually the right source folder I've copied across. It's possible I accidentally copied my 1.18 version oh god that's a little bright little blinding um the easy way that i can test if this is the what right one is just by looking at the origin because that's changed a lot okay yeah this is the correct one so let's just open cmd again 
and I'm using Eclipse, so I'm going to be using Gradlu Gen Eclipse Runs. If you're using IntelliJ, that's obviously Gradlu IntelliJ Runs, and if you're using VS Code, which you shouldn't be, then that's Gradlu VS Code Runs, or Gen VS Code Runs. But this is just the same as the setup tutorial. Nothing here is different, we just need to wait for this to run. So this could take a while, uh, I'll be back with you once this has finished. So here we are, that is completed after 12 minutes. Now if I go ahead, I can close uh, command prompt, I can close file explorer, and we can just come into uh, Eclipse, and we can close our old tutorial mod and we can import as an existing Gradle project. Now actually, before we do this, you're going to probably experience an issue. Now, the issue is Eclipse does not support, currently, Java 17. Um, and that is a pretty big issue because Minecraft 1.18 requires Java 17. So, you you have a few options in terms of what you can do here. The first option is to not use Eclipse and use IntelliJ, which is an option if you want to do that. The second option is to just install the Java 17 plugin. Now, depending on when you are watching this tutorial, um, Eclipse might support Java 17. If you have a version that's newer than 2021.09, then you will have Java 17. Uh, but as of 2021.09, which is the one I am running, uh, which is probably not going to say anywhere, but that is the one I am running, as of that version, you cannot use Java 17. Now, as I was saying, there is a plugin for this, thankfully, and that is, this is actually an official plugin made by the uh, Eclipse team. Um, and yeah, all you need to do is drag this into Eclipse. Now, there's one caveat to this, and that is when Eclipse, when you do update your Eclipse to the next version, you need to make sure you uninstall this plugin first. Otherwise, it can it can cause some pretty big issues. So you do need to make sure you do that, which is a little bit of a pain. Uh, but all you need to do is just drag it into Eclipse, and you should see it comes out of the Eclipse Marketplace. And all you need to do is basically follow the installation process that it will give you. Uh, I've already installed it, so to be honest, this is probably going to give me some issues trying again. Nope. Okay, but all you need is this top one right here. Uh, I guess maybe this one as well. I'm not sure what that one does. Um, but you can do that and then just confirm and follow the process. But I'm going to cancel that. Let's import existing Gradle project. Make sure you do that one. And we will just browse to our mod. So 1.18 tutorial mod hit next now here you do want to make sure you change a few things so you want to override the workspace settings and you want to make sure gradle wrapper is selected then down here in the java home you need to make sure you select your uh, java 17 jdk now if you don't have that you can just go ahead and install it from uh, adoptium so let me find the link to that Adoptium, here we go. Adoptium.net. All you need to do is install this Temerin 17 uh, and go through the installation process of that. Uh, it's very simple, the same as what we did previously. So let's just close that. After you've installed it, you can just select that path as your Java home. So this is the path that is to my JDK. Yours will probably be different. Um, but yeah, that's that. Then you can just hit next. And that will start the importing process. It's probably going to take a hot minute since we didn't do the Gradlu Eclipse command. Um, 
but it should still do its thing. There we go. That was actually a lot faster than I expected. Then you can just hit finish and it's just going to do some final imports. Okay, so there we go. That is just finished importing. It did take quite a while. Uh, it, it got stuck on the runtime class path copy, which it always seems to do. It's just loading the final Gradle project, uh, which, so it can load the Gradle tasks in here. Just let that finish. There we go. Now you'll see we have some errors, which is always fun. Let's see if we can go ahead and fix these then. So the first thing is in our main class. We are getting an error here. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We can leave that for a second. So the first thing we need to go ahead and fix is all our init classes have errors. Now this may seem extremely daunting, they're not they're not an issue so firstly in here okay i actually don't know what this issue here is specifically let's go into base armor material does this have an error no why doesn't it like this uh let's see int into array into array float string Int, int array, int array, floats. Oh, float, float. Oh, yeah, yeah. Float. Float, float, string. Sound event. Ah, right, that's, that's, yep, yeah, that's fine as well. Okay, we can leave that one. Okay, block entity in it. So you'll see that it seems to say that registry object doesn't exist anymore which is probably really confusing because the thing is it does exist and it's because the path to that uh, has changed so the package has changed so we just need to change to registry object alternatively we should be able to just control shift o and we need to do that for all our classes so we just need to make sure we import the correct registry object throughout all of these And import it there. And you'll see that this is getting rid of the errors everywhere. So armor in it just got rid of the error, so did the main class. And okay, that's fine. So packets are going to give us a little bit of an error at the moment. We can fix that in a second. It's an easy fix. Okay, that's all our init classes apart from packet handler, but we'll touch that in a mo. So let's come in, yeah, let's do that now actually. So let's go into our packets. And once again, network event is in a different package now. So we just need to re-import that for both our packets. And you'll see that that is fixed packet handler as well. And both of those, fantastic. We will leave origin for the moment. That's a little bit more complicated. Let's come into key init. So I believe client registry is moved as well. Yes, it has. So client registry is different. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to import it. There we go. So that's that one fixed. Okay, let's come into these classes then. And let's try and fix these. Okay, yes, I remember these ones. So... Originally in 1.17 for uh, the constants, we used the forge constant classes. However, however Minecraft have now um, kept the constants inside of, like when they compile it, they have kept the constant classes, which originally they just got rid of them for whatever reason. I don't know why. Um, but this is now just tag, I believe. Um... Or is it, it might have been tags. Or maybe not tags. MBT. MBT. No. I thought it was tag, but maybe, maybe it's not. What if I do that? Ah, it is tag. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was tag. I was a little confused there. 
Uh, just make sure you input the right tag. So this is the NBT tag, not uh, the... What's the other one? It's just actual data tags, isn't it? So make sure you input the right tag. We're going to need to make sure we change that for all of them. So both in clicker item and also in toilet block entity. And what's the issue here? All right, this has changed. So if we come into here, if we look at this, you can see they've made the constructor private. Don't know why. Um, but we can just use this create method. So instead of new, we can just do dot create, and that takes in this. So that simplifies our update packets. Um, and here, once again, tag, save, and import. There we go. Didn't like that one. Why didn't it like that one? Not sure why it didn't like that one. Now it's liking it. All right, Eclipse. Okay, network hooks, once again, that has just changed package, so we can re-import that. And what are we left with? Are we left with Orgen? I assume we are. Aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay, so Orgen is, well, it's completely different. I mean, it, it's somewhat similar in certain places, but the majority of it is just, it, it's just completely different. It's not even remotely similar. So I have created a thing for this. I just got to see if I can actually find it because I think I hidden it away somewhere. So as far as I can tell, Orgen, there's two ways of doing it now from what I can tell. So the first way is to use a vanilla method. And the second way is to not use a vanilla method. So I'll, I'll explain that in a second. So the main concept to understand is that we no longer use um, configured features for everything here. We instead use placed features. So all we need to do, first thing, is replace this list of configured features with a list of placed features. And we just need to do that for all of these three lists. And we also need to go down here and do that down here too. List of placed feature. And if we save that, that should import. Yep, and that's fixed our error down here. Okay. We can also get rid of this register method. That can go, that's no longer needed. Okay, um, what else? So here you can see we're adding it um, here. So let, let's remove these add lines. Those can go. Okay. And here, this is slightly different. So instead of all configuration dot predicates, we simply want to use or features and here as well. Let's just import that class. Yep, and also for the never. There we go. Fantastic. Now all we have is these range errors. So these ranges no longer exist because these are done on the placed feature, not on the configured feature. So first we have a feature, right? Which is this right here, feature.or. That is the actual feature. Then we configure it, which gives us a configured feature. After that, we need to make it a placed feature so that we can actually place it in the world. So yeah, as I was saying, there's two ways of doing this. Now, the first way, essentially, is to just 
go ahead and call dot placed. So there is a dot placed method on here where you can put in some placement modifiers for how you want it to be placed. The alternative method is to use a vanilla placement. So we're still going to use that dot placed no matter what. I didn't mean to open that. Uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll come up to this one up here. And I can remove this because I have it stored. But if we just do dot placed, well, actually, um, yeah, let's, let's make a variable for that and then let's make a placed feature. So final placed feature. And we'll call it placed glowstone or is equal to. And yes, actually, that is a good point. I have forgotten something. Um, we'll leave that for a second. Well, actually, yeah, we'll leave that for a second. So that is equal to glowstone or dot placed. And this will just take in the placement method that you want to use. So in this all placements class, there are a bunch of different placement methods, which you can't see because they're private. So if we want to do it this way, we need to use an access transformer. And I'm not going to be showing you how to do that in this tutorial. I will be doing that in the next tutorial. So for now, I'm just actually going to just use the normal placed method for this. Uh, and in the next tutorial, we'll switch over to using the access transformer and have a, in my opinion, better way of doing this. So all we need is the first count placement. So that is count placement dot of. And this is just the count. So basically the same as before. Um, we set the count, I believe, to 100, right? And then after that, we need to give it the uh, squaring. So for that, we can use a no, we don't square it yet, do we? No, we're doing this the wrong way around, so I don't know why I'm doing it like this. Um, but we need to first give it the height, right? So as we did before, we give it we gave it a range triangle, or did we give it a range triangle? Uh, yes, we no, we gave it uniform. Yeah, okay. So we can use a height range placement dot uniform and same as before this just gives us the two vertical anchors that we need to use so the vertical anchors that we used is vertical anchor dot bottom and then we also used vertical anchor dot above bottom and we gave it a 20 in there then we need to square it so we can use uh, what was it the square method the square method is in square placement so in square placement dot spread is the square method then we need to give it the count. So count placement dot of and our count. So I set it to 100. Okay, and that gives us the placed feature. So let's go ahead and do this for the rest of them. So let's remove this. And once again, final placed feature placed beans or is equal beans or dot placed then first the placement modifier that was a height range placement dot of uh, no not dot of it was uniform as well I believe and 
what were the different anchors so we gave it absolute 50 and absolute 120 let's just go ahead and cop oh no we gave it triangle yeah okay so we gave it triangle so revert that back to triangle then let's give it the vertical anchors fantastic and then we can do the squaring so that was in plate in square placement dot spread and then we can also give it the count placement so if we come over here count placement dot of and that was 100 fantastic so that's our placement there and finally I'm actually just going to copy this I don't know why I didn't do that for the first one I'm going to copy that and I'm going to call it placed egg or uniform and let's copy these two fantastic and that way we can just go ahead and put a semicolon there and make sure we change this to egg or otherwise that's not going to work and then finally we just need to add both of these to the lists so let's go ahead and do i believe this one was end ors and we can add the placed egg or and then up at beans or we can go never ors dot add placed beans or and then finally at the glowstone or we can go overworld ores dot add place glowstone or fantastic now there's one final thing we need to go ahead and do and that is we still need to register the features we can't get away from doing that so all we need to do is go ahead for the configured feature we'll start with first we need to go feature utils dot register and we can give this a name so the name I'm just going to give it is glowstone underscore or and let's put that extra bracket on the end fantastic so that is our configured feature let's do that for the other ones as well so once again feature utils dot register this one is beans so beans underscore or and let's put the bracket on the end and finally let's come down to egg so feature utils dot register egg underscore or and let's put the bracket on the end okay so that is our configured features registered however we now need to actually register these placed features as well so this is pretty much the same we need to come ahead and come up to here and go placement utils dot register let's give it the same name so glowstone underscore or and put the bracket on the end and let's do these for the other ones as well so come down to here this one is beans and just put the bracket on the end and then finally we have our egg or and let's put the bracket on the end fantastic okay so that should be everything on how we can update obviously as i said i will be using a slightly different way of doing this rather than having to pass in the um in, in, basically instead of having to pass in this square placement we can actually pass it straight in and instead of having to do count placement dot of we can just pass in a hundred that is what i will be showing you in the next one on access transformers however for now let's run the game oh we can't run the game yet i lied so 
we do need to come into our mods.tom still and we do need to change this to 38 so it's upper version and let's change this to 1.18 okay let's also come into our pack.mc meta and this is i believe pack format 9 i'm pretty sure but we will see if that's correct or not so that should be it let's run the game hopefully it'll work fingers crossed so here we are we're in the game as you can see we spawn next to this village and very deep river so if we come down here let's just uh, effect give night vision all right we have to f night vision and then it's like a million seconds and then 255 or something like that okay so here we are and if we go down far enough we should be able to find our block so let's go spectator mode to make this a little simpler as you can see we're definitely in 1.18 Okay, just got to see if we can find it. Here it is. So it is wood. Now, that is because we set it to spawn it uh, wood when it was in deep slate. Now, there's not going to be any stone down here, so we're not going to be able to find any glowstone, unfortunately. This is a very nice cave. I do like this update. It's quite cool. Um, but yeah that has worked as you can see it's dynamically sort of gone from the bottom of the world so since we did the uh, vertical anchor dot above bottom this is only 20 blocks above the bottom and the bottom is obviously if we go f3 the bottom is now you know all the way down here instead of being at y0 so yeah that seems to have worked let's just go into the end and into the nether so let's do set block dun 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 and let's go we'll go the never portal first right we have to be in spectator of course we do and if we go back into spectator we should be able to see what did we spawn it in we spawned it in I believe Neverack. Oh, and we said it like above top or something stupid, didn't we? Uh, let's see if we can find it. I think we set blue wall to spawn. Yeah, there we go. That's blue wall. And there should be more of it if we look around enough. Uh, we should be able to find some more. I don't remember the exact uh, boundaries that we set it to be. There's some more down there as well. Uh, it's quite rare. It's interesting. Um, but yeah, that is spawning. Okay, fantastic. Let's just come out into here. And let's go to the end. So, set block. And we'll go end portal. Okay. And if we go spectator, which it doesn't want to let me do. There we go lagging and we should be able to see yep there we go we have some gold blocks just going about all over the place so yeah i hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial or find it useful uh, if you did please do be sure to throw your socks at that like button and also subscribe as well if you really enjoyed please to be sure to share it and uh, yeah i'll see you guys in the next tutorial on access transformers good bye yeah.